Hello, I'm Russ Heinz. Today we're going to do a 90 degree bolt solid plate splice. Here are the tools required to do the installation. The first step of the installation is we're going to place a wood plank underneath the two belt ends. We're going to take our corresponding template that matches the belt width and we're going to center it side to side and make sure the tabs are up against the belt end. And then we're going to take the nails provided in the bucket and lock it in the place on the wood plank, making sure that that tab stays up against the belt end. I'm not going to tighten those nails all the way down until I have both belt ends inserted. And then we're going to bring in that second belt end and slide it into place up against the tabs of the template, once again making sure we're centered side to side. And then we're going to lock in the second belt end. Making sure the belt ends are up against those tabs, we'll go ahead and set those nails completely into the belt. If needed, we can go ahead and angle the nails to make sure there's a tight fit up against the tabs. One of the benefits of the template is the gap it creates in between the two belt ends. This helps create a tight, sift-free joint after installation. Also, it provides proper hole location for each corresponding fastener size. Next, we're going to punch the holes into the belt. We're going to use our half-inch impact and install our quick-change chuck and the corresponding power punch for the fastener size selected. It's always good to apply silicone to the template, which helps cool the power punch. When punching the belt, we want to make sure you don't go too far into the wood or else that will dull the punch quicker. After punching the holes, we're going to remove the nails of the template and then we're going to wipe the belt down so it's easier to skive. The reason why we didn't skive first is because we needed a flat surface for the placement of that template while punching the holes. The benefit of skiving the belt is to countersink the splice for improved cleaner compatibility. The next step is to insert the bottom plate assemblies into the belt. It's always easiest to take one side and flip it over so we're inserting the bottom plates on the bottom side. When finished, we'll flip that belt end back over. And then we're going to use the comb side of the template to align all the fasteners. While inserted into the template, we're going to insert the opposite side of the belt into the bottom plates. Remove the template and push the belts down into place. Next, we're going to insert the top plates over the bolts. On thicker belt, you may find it's harder to get the top plates on. If needed, we can use the additional bolt horn to help place those top plates into position. Next, we're going to place the nuts onto the bolts. A unique feature of the Flexco bolt is the piloted end. This helps for quicker installation of the nut and less chance of stripping out threads. Next, we're going to insert the Flexco lock tape. We're going to measure this three and a half times the belt width. The benefits of using the Flexco lock tape is the decreased belt ripple and the minimized belt growth. 
when inserting the flex lock tape, we want to insert the bottom side, then insert it over the top side. We're going to pull that top end tight and then insert it a second time over the top. While pulling that tight, we're going to lock down our first end plates. Now we're going to take a first pass on the nuts to bring them down against the plates so the plates are flat against the belt. Starting with the edges of the belt, working towards the middle. I'm going to take a final pass and tighten all the nuts so the plates compress into the belt. And we're going to stay with the same sequence of starting at the edge to the middle and edge to the middle from each belt end. Next, we're going to break the bolts using the corresponding bolt breakers for the fastener size selected. It makes it easier to break the bolts by doing the opposite corners of adjacent plates. Also using short, quick strokes to break the bolts. If the occasional bolt gets stuck on the edge of the bolt breaker, go ahead and just hit it loose. The final step is to peen the excess bolt. This will ensure that the nut doesn't back off and also ensure that the teeth on the plate fully set into the carcass of the belt. Following these quick and easy steps, you should now have the confidence to get your belt up and running with minimal downtime and a long-lasting splice.